Okay, so we've come across Kieran from Garmin. How's it going, Nice Rob? to see you, Kieran. What's new with Garmin? Well, we've got an, a lot of exciting products going on this year. We've launched the new Verb Ultra 30, which will connect into your MFD, so you can have live streaming video in 4K quality back to your head unit. The old Verb cameras do that too, though, right? There's Generation 2? Yeah, Generation 2. Uh, what else is out there? The, the, the Quick Draw is becoming more prevalent now? Quick Draw is one of our really awesome tools this year. So it's not a case of having reasonably inaccurate charts here in New Zealand anymore. Now that we've got Quick Draw, you can go out on your own boat, redraw your chart in real time so that you've got the most accurate maps available uh, for your fishing area. So I mean that, that's kind of technology that's been out for a while in the commercial sector with computer programs like Piscatus and Maxi, uh, and uh, uh, Lawrence and Samara had it with the Inside Genesis uh, as well. What's the kind of what's the difference between the two? Or what, so what's... the best thing about the Garmin program is it's free. There's no subscription, and you don't have to share it with anyone. Uh, with another couple of the competition brands, they will take that information and can update their charts and you could lose your, your secret fishing spot. It's, it's super simple to use. It's a case of pushing a couple of buttons and it will just start recording as you're travelling along. Right. Okay, so especially with, with lakes and stuff that are uncharted? Yeah, that's true. We've got a lot of customers using it, uh, especially on the Echo Map series, uh, fitting out smaller boats, fishing the lakes. They've got the down view, side view built in as well for finding that structure and then they're just mapping over the top. Quick draw will work from our 45 DV right up to our uh, 8400 series. So, so Panoptics, what's, what's happening with Panoptics? So Panoptics is our new sonar technology. It's live real-time sonar. It's multi-beam so it enables you to actually see what's under the boat in real time. You can watch your line going down and you can see the fish coming up to it. We have both the, the downward version and the forward facing version. Uh, and the other good thing about that is it will 3D map the ocean floor as you're cruising along. It will make your, um, your quick draw contours a lot more accurate as well. If I'm Joe Public and I'm looking at spending 1500 bucks on a, on a say, 7 inch chart plot of sounder, why would I choose Garmin over say a Lawrence or a Simrad or a Fruno or you know, one of those other brands? Well, we have the latest technology built into our units. So we have absolutely fantastic sonar for your target separation, finding fish, and also finding structure. I do a lot of diving, so I use the down view and side view to find that structure, and hey, I get a lot of crayfish. Um, you also have really good mapping. Our blue chart mapping is, is some of the best in the business, but then we also have that ability to redraw the map with quick draw. Um, our seven inch units, they also have NMEA 2000 integration, so we have a Honda outboard on the Garmin boat, fantastic little outboard, and it spits out that information straight into that seven inch head unit. And the other thing that we do is fusion stereo integration. So we have the best in the business fusion stereo integration. They're, a, they're another great Garmin company. Autopilot integration as well. So Even from the little ones? Or? From anything that's got an enemy A2000 uh, plug in the back. Right, yep. okay, so cool. This year we also brought out a a budget version of our autopilot. It's got a one litre pump, so it's for outboards up to 300 horsepower, and it just makes autopilot much more affordable for your average boaty. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. So how much is one of those? Uh, they start at $2,300, and depending on what configuration, go from there. Right, cool. Um, how about radar? Radar is one of my favorite things. So we had the, um, the Phantom Doppler radar launched about a year ago now, yes. and you've had a few of those uh, out on the water? There have been a few on, on the water here in New Zealand. I personally have not had experience with it on the water yet, but from all accounts, all our customers are happy. So uh, with the uh, the Doppler, I mean, we, we uh, just had a yarn to the Furuno guys about their Doppler. Now that's a ray dome where the Phantom is currently just a, yes. uh, an open array. Yes. What uh, what kind of what, what's the differences between the two Doppler systems? Because they're they're obviously fairly similar, right? Yes, they are. Yes, um, the open array is just gives you more phases in your array. Yeah. So you're going to get a more high definition uh, image than if you if you'd gone with a smaller dome. Right. Right. So one of the really cool features that we like about the uh, the. 7400 series is the verb integration. So what, um, I mean, just going through this, this integration here, because obviously we've got the camera here in front of us, um, and we've got the screen open. We've got a take a photo button and a record button. That's correct. So you've got full control of your camera from your MFD. So you can rig up a couple of these with a hard wire power cable on your outriggers and look down on your lures all day long while you're cruising around marlin fishing. All right, well, thanks, Kieran. Yeah, no worries, Rob. Thanks for Enjoy your couple of minutes. back to Tarang and have a safe drive. Yeah, cheers. <laughs>
Okay, so we've moved along to a good New Zealand company here, Fusion Entertainment. I'm here with Glenn Orr. How are you going, Glenn? Yeah, really good. Good yeah, to see you. Yeah, pretty Excellent. brilliant. Yeah. So what's new? Well, we're at the uh, Auckland on Water Show, and uh, the new product that we're exhibiting at the show today is the new Fusion Stereo Active. You've which... pretty much got the whole the whole stand covered in this one product now, isn't it? Yeah, indeed, indeed. It's uh, a bit of a world first, like most of uh, Fusion products, and um, this unit here looks somewhat like a Bluetooth speaker, but in fact, it's a fully integrated stereo system. When you say, what do you mean, fully integrated? Um, most of the units that look like this are just Bluetooth speakers where you stream your telephone music direct to the speaker, but this unit here has AM, FM tuners, um, plays USB, uh, you can wire your telephone into it either via Android or uh, Apple, and uh, also you can stream your Bluetooth um, music directly to it from your phone. And uh, if your phone goes flat while you're out on your paddle board and you need to call for assistance, you can actually reverse charge from this unit to your iPhone and charge your iPhone up so you can ring for help. So what's the actual battery life on? Battery life is just on 20 hours uh, at normal listening levels and at full power you'll get over three hours use. But yeah. at full power you're just about deafening yourself. The sound quality on these is fantastic. And, and what, it's pretty waterproof? Totally waterproof. It's actually IPX7 which means you can submerse it to a meter for 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, but you don't need to worry about that so much because uh, they actually float. So if they drop overboard or fall off your paddle board, which they shouldn't do with the locking system, um, it'll just float. So uh, it's pretty cool. And um, and where do you see these things being used? Like obviously on paddle boards, I see you've got a couple of paddle boards here. Kayaks, yeah. small yeah, boats. Kayaks, paddle boards, anything that doesn't have a battery, any boat that has a twist grip outboard on it that where someone wants music. Yeah. Um, also around your spa pool, inside listening to music, ATVs, hunters taking them out in the bush, getting them covered in mud and they can hose them down when they're finished or even just take them to the beach and if you get it full of sand just hose it out and away you go and it's ready to go. So what else have we got that's new? Um, we're releasing the RA55 stereo uh, which is uh, our new entry level product. It, uh, um, it's under $300, it now has four speakers and Bluetooth streaming and uh, um, we haven't had that hit the streets yet, that's due in about two weeks so uh, cool. uh, when, it, when it does hit the streets we're anticipating big big sales for it. And the uh, 55, it's, is it going to be an EMA 2000 or is it? No, it's just primarily just for audio only whereas the RA70 that you previously mentioned uh, there is a NEMA version as well which, is, yep. Uh, yep. Uh, which enables you to connect your Fusion Stereo to any of the major brands of multifunction displays. I'm here with Earl Bond from Electronic Navigation. Earl's worked for Furuno for probably 25 years. 25 years. So he, he really knows his stuff when it comes to the gear. So what's new, Earl? What's new? Uh, Rob, we're looking at the new Doppler radar. Uh, that's the NXT. Uh, radar. The Doppler radar is unique. Um, only a couple of companies are producing this radar at the moment so the, uh, and the, it has some really nice features. So the NXT is a ray dome rather than being an open array? That's correct. It is a ray dome, 4 kilowatt uh, rated but actually 25 watts Doppler solid state radar. Right. So this is one of those new technology, latest technology with the, the really low power output but able to get really good target definition and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's and then on top of that, what does the Doppler give you? Uh, well, the Doppler effect is the fact that it's listening to its targets, and when it hears the target getting louder, it will change the target colour to another colour so you can quickly identify all targets in the area of your vessel, which could be a danger to you. So that's targets that are moving towards the boat? That's correct. That's targets that are moving towards your boat, yeah. So uh, how about if boats are moving yeah. further away from, the, from, the, from our vessel? Well, if, if, the, if the Doppler effect is not show, or, or felt by the radar, then the target will remain clear and there will be no problem. Yep. The, also, the other advantage of the Doppler is that you can use the Doppler to acquire targets for ARPA. So that's automatic radar piloting aid, and it does it automatically through the Doppler. So it sees the target and then it puts an ARPA on it, so you're able to get information from that target when you tap on it. So if, if I'm a, just a beginner uh, for radar, how does that affect me? W will the targets be a different colour on the screen if they're moving towards me? And will I have to tap on anything to, to get the, the, the system to recognise the targets? Or? Well, you don't need to. Um, the different colour of the target as opposed to clear targets is certainly an indication that you can have a look around and go, oh yes, I see that boat, 
it, it looks like I need to make uh, an evasive move yeah, or yeah. He, he needs to make a heading change. Yeah. So it's very easy and quickly identifiable because you just look at the screen and go, wow, I can see this. If, if, I, if I'm not uh, paying attention for whatever reason or if there's lots of boats in the area, will it actually alarm if I'm in danger or if somebody else is in danger? Yes, the radar could be set up for alarms on those targets. Fantastic, yep. excellent. But of course, you don't you don't uh, you don't recommend that people just leave the uh, upper targets I, on I, and I <laughs> go make a cup of tea. I certainly wouldn't recommend that, Rob. Even with an autopilot, you wouldn't, you wouldn't leave that alone. You want to be alert all the time, looking around. Yep. Cool. And so, what else we've got going on? Well, We're standing here in front of a, a TZ Touch 12. Yes, the TZ Touch 12. Um, one of the unique features of TZ Touch that we haven't really um, gone to air with a lot is the weather downloading. Right. So you can download weather, surface sea temperatures, um, waves, uh, plankton, all sorts of information can be done simply by connecting through Wi-Fi to a hotspot on your phone, accessing a server which belongs to MaxC, and this server is updated four hourly with weather updates. So if, if I've got an Android or an iPhone, I can just set that to a hotspot. I think a lot of people will know how to do that. Yes. And then you just connect to the hotspot from the unit, is that right? That's correct. Yeah. And then click a button and it will download the weather. Yes, and then you can view various things of weather. Here we see isobars for pressure, and we see wind indication, and we see sea surface temperature. Yep. With the overlays of colour, you can't view all plankton or altimetry or uh, cloud or sea surface temperature at once, but you can view it separately yep. because the overlays are different colours and they, and they don't mix. So that's SST up there at the moment, is it? Yes. So we, got we can a see a bit of a hotspot up, hot up there. Okay, yeah. that's quite cool. And this is current. This is this is this is today. Well, what are you doing here? Well, <laughs> I ask myself. <laughs> I ask myself, especially with wind indication out in the Gulf here at five knots, <laughs> maybe maybe less. We should be out there with catching fish. One other um, feature which I learned about the TZ just recently, which I probably should have known about, is that you can have the sounder up on an iPad and have the chart plotter still on the TZ Touch. So it's transmitting that information even without being displayed. Yes, that's correct. On TZ Touch 2, remember though, you can only do that as a viewer app to ah. view the sounder only. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, and with the TZ Touch 2, uh, we're doing a special price at the moment with a DFF3 and two, two that, kilowatt transducers? Yeah, that's correct, Rob. We, for, for the show and for the rest of this month, we have a deep water package. It includes this sounder or 15 inch sounder with a DFF3. Now the DFF3 is a sounder module that can do one, two or three kilowatt. We've coupled it up with two two kilowatt transducers, notably two kilowatt 200 and two kilowatt 38. And that's what we call our deep water package. So we're talking here at 38 kilohertz, good bottom discrimination at up to a thousand meters. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think you'd get that out of it. So the DFF3 itself, that's the same back end as an FCV295, is that right? It is, right behind you there, Rob. Right. This is a <laughs> 1150, but it's very similar to a 295, as you said. And these sounders are one, two, and three kilowatt and configurable yep. frequencies. So it is, DFF3 is essentially this unit without a screen, using this screen as the viewing. It's one of the things I didn't mention with the uh, 1150 here, this sounder is also networkable. Yeah. So if you have a separate couple of stations, you could use this as the sounder and network it to another display, say on the bridge, or vice versa down from the bridge to a saloon, and still get that sounder working on this screen. So yep. that's yep. another thing. Well, thank you very much, Earl, for um, seeing us today. It's a pleasure, and, uh, sparing us a couple of minutes, yeah, and yeah. Um, no doubt we'll be seeing you in the future, bringing down all this Furno gear for yeah. us to sell. <laughs>
with Lorance, one of the key products we've released this year is called the Elite TI series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been uh, doing those out of our shop, and, and obviously the big key with those is, is their touchscreen, right? So we, yeah. we, we were asking, talking to Kieran just earlier on about you know what he would go with in that fifteen hundred dollar mark, and obviously the Elite Seven TI is right at that kind of fifteen hundred dollar mark, and it's a touchscreen model, so that's a big kind of advantage that you got over the competition in that that area. Definitely. Yeah, I mean it's the first time Lorance has had a touchscreen with a chart and with a transducer for under three grand. So in the past, we, we didn't have anything. We had HDS, uh, yep. which was up. You add a transducer and a chart, you're looking at three grand. So yep. for us, we've got something now. It's retail about $1,600. Um, and that comes with a transducer. It's called Total Scan. So it's all in one side scan, down scan, and, uh, and chirp sound are all in one. Yep. So yep. Um, that's where the so sort of technology is going, is it's one transducer that sort of does everything yeah, now. Absolutely. But the, so that's the, like about the sixteen hundred dollar mark, with the sixteen twenty nine or whatever. And then yeah. there's another one which is actually a bit cheaper as well, isn't it? And that's just got the downscan bundle. Yeah, yes, yeah. so we do. We do a um, we do a five inch version. So we do the Elite uh, Five Ti, which uh, has actually been a big hit with the jet ski market. So a lot of guys are putting them into jet skis. It fits up in the console. There is a, a big one for us next year. Is the Elite Seven Ti has been. I think it was released back in March this year, and it's become our single biggest seller for Lorance. Oh, really? It's, I mean, it's essentially been a lot few boat shows that have been at recently and people, oh, I've got a small runabout, Elite 7 Ti, I've got yeah. this Elite 7 Ti. It's, it's becoming a standard for us and it's, um, well, they're it, bringing out a nine, so. It, yeah, it's funny, well, the nine will be really good as well, but mm. it's funny because Garmin really opened up that market with the, the 70 series, uh, the small, cheap touch screens. Yeah. And they just closed the door on I them. know, and it, we <laughs> were hurting, like back in the day, we, they, they killed us, you know, and, yeah. and, and then they just, that market's just gone and, and it's like now we've got, We've got Lorance and Simrad in that market to ourselves, and no one else is dominant. No one else ha even has an option in that space. So obviously, I mean, um, I asked the same question to Kieran earlier on. Fifteen hundred dollars, you're going to go with the Elite Seven Ti? Yeah, for sure, definitely. And, and, um, and for what reasons? What, what, what um, those reasons you're talking about? With yeah. The, the side scan and the integrated Wi-Fi and whatnot. Or? Yeah, I mean, you just have to play with the unit to see. You know, they're they're, they're far easier than some of our other products in that sort of price range. Um, really just the, the, the bang for your buck, you know, what you get for what you pay. And it's just, um, you know, it's hit that price point, it's hit that screen size. Most people are looking at seven inch screens now as a standard. Yeah. You know, five inch sales have really tapered off and seven inches have really ramped up. So we've sort of, you know, I think we've really hit that price point with the features and just the ease of use as well. Yeah. Um, and so for us, it's, and that's sort of, I mean, that's that's why it's become our best seller. It's so, um, a big one. One of the big things that, that uh, Karen was talking about was the quick draw software. Uh, and now obviously yeah. is, is, is an updating software uh, and then with the Lauren stuff you've got the Insight Genesis. Now the Insight Genesis community is obviously a lot more established now because it's been out for yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's been around four years and it's sort of, I mean it's, it's really like if you look at the stats of usage over the last four years it's just in New Zealand it's gone sort of like this, like this and then it's just gone like that. So yeah. it's what it does is it records, you select to record the fish finder data as you go. And, and it won't map it instantaneously. What it does, you take the data, you put it online, it, it goes through checks and balances and goes through algorithms. So you take that bathymetric map, put it back into your display, and um, and then you can actually share it as well. So you can you can take other people's data. So Tarawera has been mapped completely. Okatina well, is getting mapped. I was having a look at the, the Insight Genesis uh, chart of Tarawera. It's yeah. so extensive that I think that that data actually came from the University of Waikato, didn't it? Uh, no, oh, I don't think so. Um, I, I don't know exactly who mapped Tauera, but, um, but... I mean, my point is it's not some uh, Joe Bloggs going out in his team. No, it is. Yeah, sure. yeah, 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 it is. I mean, you, you've got... The thing is, it's... it's. I think Tauera is a couple of guys, and they're pretty, they're pretty into what they do, and they've got good HDS gear on there, and I think they... I think they, 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 they did most of the mapping. It's definitely not... Um, university or, or anyone yeah, okay. sort of like right. that it's it's joe blogs and that's the idea is getting joe blogs to map, map these areas and then share the data mm. um well i mean because yeah. of the, the flip side from that of course is if uh you, you do need to uh, upload it to the internet don't you so yeah so there is definitely it, it's you know and that's i guess that's the the downside of it it's not mapping as you go it's it's you have to put it online creates the map and then you put it back into your display and I mean yeah. most of our MFDs now are all Wi-Fi built in so well, you can actually do it wirelessly. You did, I mean is the Elite 7 Ti Wi-Fi compatible? So can it you sure do it is. From, so, yep. I can so you can do it straight straight from your from your display so if you've got an oh, okay, Elite cool. 7 Ti 
Um, what you want to do is you want to take out your Navionics chart. So if you're, if you're doing fresh water, I'd recommend taking out your Navionics chart, put a blank card in, um, and then you basically record and you can upload through your phone or uh, when you get back to like a Wi-Fi source or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically you turn your, your phone into a Wi-Fi hotspot yep. and then you can connect to it and then upload it. Through your that. phone. So, so the um, autopilot, so the, the, there is a black box autopilot now for, for Lawrence? Yeah, and which is a first for Lawrence, so we've, you know, we haven't had any sort of autopilot options available. And for, it's cheap. Yeah, it's, it, and it works really well, you know, we've had good feedback from it. I think it, the other bit of feedback I heard, it actually comes with hydraulic fittings for itself as well. It that? does, yeah, it comes with a hydraulic pump with a hydraulic fitting kit, um, and it comes with a heading sensor, and it basically it uses your HDS um, Gen 2 Touch, so Gen 2, Gen 2 Touch or Gen 3 as ah, your autopilot control. Not the Elite stuff? Not the Elite. Ah, no. okay, so yeah. it's designed for HDS products basically. Yep. Um, so basically it, it, it uses your MFD as a control. What size is the pump that they come with? So it's a point, point 0.8 litre pump. So point essentially eight, yeah. it's, I mean it's designed for sort of a, a sink. 300? Yeah, uh, yeah, about yeah, two, sort of 250. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's basically designed for a sort of, you know, sort of six and a half trailer boat, six and a half metre trailer boat and yeah. under, sort of. Have yeah. That, um, uh, have you heard of many people putting them on launches? Uh, not, not really, really, no. I mean, we've, that, and that's generally where we, you know, you're, you're generally then looking at a, a boat with a rudder right feedback and you're looking at a yeah. bigger processor and, yeah. you know, and you're generally, they, guys in launch have got a bit more space, they're looking at a separate autopilot control and, Etc. Etc. So. So that um, uh, that autopilot that we're talking about, the eighteen hundred dollar one. Yeah. Which I should know the pro the, the uh, name of. But yeah, no, no. It's, uh, <laughs> we uh, basically you've got called you've got two two versions. You've got the the outboard pilot, which is a sort of value range heading sensor, and then you've got the drive pilot, which is a, a better heading sensor, which is a compass. Now, when you say the uh, the. the because really it's the budget one that people are going to go for. Yeah, yeah. That's a 0.1. Yeah. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's called a 0.1 AP. It's essentially, it's, it's, the, it's the 0.1 housing, but it's got a diff slightly different sensor in it. Well, the, can you still use that as a GPS? Uh, I believe so, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, if, if you are actually getting an aluminium hard drop and you need an external GPS yeah, anyway... Yeah, spend another grand and put an autopilot in. Yeah, yeah exactly. You, you're yeah. basically going to be spending that, what, five or $600 on the external yeah, GPS. definitely. Yeah, with starter kit and that, it all comes, it's a good thing with the pilot, it all comes bundled with everything, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, structure Scan 3D is a separate transducer, so it's transom mount only currently, they're, they're working on a through hole, it's only a couple of months away, um, and then a separate processor, and it'll, it'll only run on the HDS Gen 3s, uh, but basically it'll give you a three dimensional picture of the bottom, so as you're motoring along it'll, it'll build up a picture in 3D. Um, does it save that picture? Like, uh, can you go over an area and, and, and then have it and return to the same area and still have this 3D? Nature? Yeah, unfortunately not. You can you can record 2D over an area and then save it yeah. to a memory card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can start to build that up. Yep. yep. Um, like, so yeah. So you're again, doing structure scan overlay. Yeah, basically you've been able side to do scan that for a while, right? Yeah, it's just got, it's got a lot better. So the, okay. the image is a lot crisper. You know, you could the, the detail you get is a lot more. You get really clear. You know, where the rocks are, ripples in the sand, where the edge of the reef is, with you know, sand, yeah. Yeah. Um, seaweed, that sort of thing. Um, and that's been it's been a massive seller since it came out uh, in December. Like, it's about just under just under a year ago. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's been a big seller. I mean, it's it's plug in. Plug into the HDS um, product. It is plug in, not yeah, an extra box. No, it's a sorry, separate box yep. and transducer. It comes as a kit, it's 1600 bucks, 16, 1700 bucks. So, yeah, that's a lot cheaper than, because uh, basically the, the equivalent would be the Garmin Pan Optics to a certain yep. extent, you know. They're For not the sure, same, yeah. They're yep. kind of, you know, similar kind of. Yeah, sport. definitely. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much, Ben. No very nice to stop. Yeah, look at that. Uh, I was having a yarn on the, on the camera. Yeah, no,